2005, the best Astros teams of the years past were able to win games in a variety of ways. Now in 2015, Jose Altuve and the Astros are jumping in the time machine and erasing recent disappointments one win at a time. Today, they'll try to do something no Astros team has ever done before. A chance at history, coming your way next. One. Ten days ago, the Houston Astros embarked on a nine-game West Coast trip. Eight games later, the now first-place Astros have gone a very impressive seven and one. And the lone remaining contest is in the more than capable left hand of staff ace Dallas Keuchel. Hi, everybody. Alan Ashby and Jeff Blum with you. We have been together on one glorious road trip right now. And now we go to a, what is it, Wednesday, throwback Wednesday, way back Wednesday today, as the Padres will be wearing some very special-looking brown uniforms. The Astros were to wear the rainbows, but it uh, should be a fun day out there. Yeah. Sounds like your kind of day out here, right? That should be a good reminiscing throughout the course of this game. Well, let's go ahead and reminisce a little bit as we look back to 1986. The last time the Astros uh, went... 9-2 as they began the season on the road. Mike Scott had some really good stuff going. We also had Terry Poole running down everything in right field. Jose Cruz breaking from line to line. There were some very good players on that club that wound up going into the postseason. Joe Negro was throwing knuckleballs that only Patrick Waugh behind the dish could handle. And uh, it, was, it was just a, a lot of fun stuff going on. So as we look to yesterday, a lot of offense for the Strokes. A lot of offense, and that explains why that record is so good right now. 7-1 on the current trip. And you see that bottom line? They have never gone 8-1 on an end-game road trip like this. But a lot of it's due to the fact the offense is tearing the cover off the ball right now. Any and every mis mistake that is thrown out over the plate, the Astros are up to the challenge, barreling it up, driving it in the gaps, and that's what's leading to so many runs being scored, and not to mention what they've been doing late in these ball games to, add, to just pile on these teams. Coming up, the Astros have been road warriors early in 2015, punctuated by the intensity of their fiercely competitive pitching ace. How good has Keiko been on the road recently? We'll break it down next.
The Astros have come in and just laid it on the San Diego Padres. First couple of games, they've won five consecutive, have the Astros seven of eight on this road trip, playing great ball, and now Dallas Keuchel, who has been spectacular anywhere he goes out on the mound for Houston. Yeah, we just hinted at the offense now, well they're doing, but today's pitching performance is powered by Kubota, and it's Dallas Keuchel, the road warriors. We look at what he's done on the road in 2015. Two road starts, 1.13 ERA. Last time out in Oakland, he went nine complete giving up no runs, no offense, offensive support to speak of in that situation. But I look for him to go out there and do a great job of keeping that ball down. The ground ball rate for him is off the charts. If you're playing defense, you better be on your toes because that ball is going to be on the ground to you. Giving up 13 hits and 29 innings pitched, only two extra base hits on the road. Coming up, win, lose, or draw, the one constant for the Houston Astros over the past three years has been the bat of Jose Altuve. How's the reigning batting champ feeling about the Astros' hot start? Julia gives us the lowdown after the break. for baseball perfect conditions down here on the field and last night we saw what ended up being a one-sided affair the Astros bats taking off after what was a slow start to the season but that seems so long ago hits coming from all over the lineup last night and Jose Altuve had six at bats getting hits in four of those couple of doubles drove in a run last night almost drove in another that's a seven game hit streak for Altuve with multiple hits in the last six incredible stuff but he doesn't want the credit he's loving what he's seeing here's our Geico quote of the day he's saying this is the real team he went on to say everybody's doing their job the relievers coming in the game and keeping the game there it seems we are working as a team and if we keep doing this we're going to be really good. That's good to hear from a team leader. And guys, they're putting together their best April in a long time. They're very proud of that, but that's not the goal. The nice streak, though, is helping them come together. I feel like they're learning a lot about each other and what they're capable of, and you can only hope that helps them down the line. Thanks a lot, Julia. Jose Altuve did have the big night. Ten extra base hits for the ball club yesterday. One triple, three home runs, six doubles for the club. Really an amazing night, and uh, it just seemed to go on and on. Some of the guys coming off the bench also contributing late. They're real good, and it's a good time to be an Astro, and they're proving it right now. Swinging the bat's great. Hopefully they have more offense to provide for Dallas Keuchel. Yeah, it's fun to watch. George Springer had a little breakout night again last night. Pounded a home run way out of here. And uh, Chris Carter is on a maybe a surprising hitting streak right now. Seven in a row for Chris. So some of the guys really swinging it well. That starting lineup for the Houston Astros. 
given to us by A.J. Hinch at Southwest Airlines. Looks about like this. Jose Altuve in the top spot, followed by Marwin Gonzalez at shortstop. Luis Valbuena is the three-hitter. Middle three, George Springer. He's in right, Colby Rasmus and Chris Carter following in the bottom three, Jake Marizic. And then talk about a fine seven-hitter. Hank Conger gets the start behind the plate. And Dallas Keiko will swing the wood today. Andrew Kashner is going to be on the mound for the San Diego Padres. Has electric stuff. Velocity is actually picking up this year, if you can believe it or not, averaging about 95 miles an hour on that fastball. He's got a slider, curveball, but I've also heard good things about that changeup that he has. He earned his first victory of the season on the 19th against Chicago, out there in the nat out there in uh, against the Cubbies. Allowed two earned runs, five hits, five strikeouts, two walks over six innings. Another good matchup. So we are set to go. Perfect day here in San Diego. Jose Altuve, seven game hitting streak. The four hits that Julia mentioned in last night's ball game. First time he's reached four hits this year. He did it five times last year while he won the batting title at 341. Takes a perfectly spotted strike. But Altuve is off to a much faster start than a year ago. He's hitting 348 as he stands in. 0 2 the count, 95 on that heater. So we're looking at a good arm here this afternoon. And by the way, if you're wondering about multi hit games, Altuve with 10 of those through the first 20 games on the season, he did that 69 times last year. Grounds it foul. Well, he's got a lot of big numbers to go after. Leads the American League in hits, 31. It felt like a little bit of a slow start for Altuve at certain points, but he has really brought it along. And that's just away. Altuve had two doubles in last night's game. That's the way you'd like to see it all day long. Stay consistent with that pitch. And the slider. Tough pitch off the strike zone. And down on strikes to start things, Jose Altuve. Defense behind Andrew Kashner here on this day game at Petco Park around the out outfield. Usual suspects and Upton Myers and Kemp. Left side of the infield, Will Middlebrooks back at third base. Clint Barmas out there at shortstop and Jed Jerko at second base. You got Erbys Solarte who moves from second base to first base and Will Nieves picking up for Derek Norris who took a beating last night. Marwin Gonzalez stands in. Oh, that's a good looking fastball. Marwin is hitting 273. Hooked a double down the right field side on a pretty good looking curveball late in last night's game. He was a late entry into the party. And the count quickly at 0 and 2. Looks like Kashner is after the strike zone with good stuff. Final game of this three game series. Final game of this nine game, 10 day road trip. And the Astros. Have made the most of this trip. One ball and two strikes. And the Astros have been putting a load of runs on the board. They have pitched well, no question about it, but 14 runs yesterday, nine in the game before. Seven in the final game at Oakland, nine in game two, and six in game one at Oakland. So it's been a scoring affair for the Astros. Marwin is the guy being counted on to shore things up defensively at shortstop. Jed Lowry now on the DL and likely to be there until after and maybe long after the All Star break. Kashner has a nice pace as he starts today's ball game. Remember, the whole thing began on this road trip with winning the first two at Seattle over the Mariners. The Mariners edged one out 3 2 in game three. But since then, some nice come from behind victories in Oakland and, and just pounding away here in San Diego. Now they're playing good team baseball. You heard Altuve with that quote. To begin the game, this is the real team. And you keep hearing that word a lot. Now, granted, they're winning and things are very good right now, but it's still good to hear him talking as a team. 
And that team is nine and two to start the year on the road. So obviously a win today to go to ten and two would be very special for the club. Uh, ten and two would be their best record on the road through 12 games in franchise history. Slider got him. A couple of strikeouts on the slider. Pretty good fight by Marwin. Just Asher has too much right now. Nice late bite on that. Good depth on that slider too. He's a big man coming at you. Big man with very impressive looking stuff here in the first inning. Two outs, nobody on base. Valbuena at the plate. Luis hitting 225. A little change piece. Mix that in with 94 95 on the heater. Tough looking slider. Could be a, a, well, a challenging day for the Astros bats. Not quite getting to the fastball yet. The Astros 13 and 7 overall record has them off to their best start since 2006. That club went 14 and 6 through their first 20. And down on strikes. So punching out the side is Kastner, a 1 2 3 first inning. Dallas Keuchel would seem to have to be at his very best this afternoon. One of them, like the back of his hand. Starting lineup for the San Diego Padres here this afternoon. We're going to play it right on the field here rather than on the beach. Will Myers leads it off. Don Hervé Solarte, that second, and Matt Kemp in the three spot. The middle three Matt Kemp, Justin Upton, and Will Middlebrooks. And the bottom, well, let's see, Jed Jerko followed by Clint Barmas, Will Nieves, and the pitcher, Andrew Kashner. So Will Myers stands in. And he has been showing a big bat here in the series. It was Myers in yesterday's game, though, defensively in the first inning as Evan Gaddis crushed one to center field. Myers got his glove on it. The ball hit off the glove, then the top of the wall and bounced out of here as the Astros caught a break, jumped on top two to nothing, and just kept on going. And Conger behind the plate today. A little boxing match with that one. Two balls and no strikes as we started. Dallas Keiko with terrific numbers coming in. Could easily be 4 0 on his year. Look at Dallas Keiko and what he's done. Some of the numbers on him. He throws a fastball 65% of the time, but last time out. 
against those Oakland A's. He threw it about 75% of the time, really upping it, going to that slider and change up when he needs to. Does a good job of setting that up. And gets a strike call here on a pitch that might have been low. If he gets that call, it's going to be a long day for Padre hitting. Already leads the major leagues, getting almost five ground ball outs per fly ball out. And the 2 2 change, and you can see Will Myers just reaching out in front to get a piece. The you know, win loss record's great for Keiko. The ERA is fantastic. But I was interested to see that he's got 18 strikeouts, 11 walks on the season. It tells you he's working the edges. And the 2 2 once again. Fastball, when it's not sinking, can tail sometimes, and that looked like the case. So Keiko works a 3 2 count on his first batter of the day. That's ball driven to right field. Center shift on him. Will Myers put the barrel right on this one. Let's take a look at the defense behind Dallas Keiko. Colby Rasmus out in left field. Jake Marizic at center. George Springer at right. Around the infield. Luis Galbuena at third. Marwin Gonzalez back out there at shortstop. Altuve and Carter on the right side again. Jason Castro getting the day off here during the day game. And Hank Conger will be behind the plate picking up for him working with Dallas Keuchel. That's the fifth hit of the series for Will Myers. Good looking young player. He's held on by Chris Carter as Keuchel who very seldom even yields an attempt to steal off of him. Brings the strike. Jan Harvey Solarte at the plate. He is the first baseman here today. And off to a good start on his year, 346, a couple of bombs. One of the rare times Keiko lifts that leg all the way. And that induced the runner Myers to actually go back toward the bag at first. Watch that reaction. Usually it's the slide step from Keiko, so a different look. There goes the runner, and the pitch on the hands hit in the air center field. Easy for Marisnik. He'll make the catch quickly back to first is Will Myers. Out number one. Castro's catching a break. Will Myers had that base stolen easy. He got a great jump on Keiko. Probably going on first move, but caught him about a half count before Keiko delivered the ball to home plate. But the flyout forces him back to first. So Larte, who just flied out, like Myers with five hits in the series. So the Padres have some bats that have been successful. The Astros bats have just been red hot, and now Matt Kemp steps in. You saw the 330 batting average. There's your outside corner. Keichel would love to live on both edges all afternoon long. Ball and a strike. Dallas just 27 years of age. And he has blossomed into some kind of major league pitcher. Steps back and throws to first. To give a little different look. It's a good seed to plant right there with that step off and throw move. Myers does not go the pitch hit in the air right center field long run and nobody's going to get there. This drops and goes to the wall. Myers will be waved home. First run of the ball game RBI triple for Matt Kemp and the Padres strike first. And that is a very rare run against Dallas Kuyper. It's a good piece of hitting by a very good hitter. Probably saw the scouting report says Kuyper likes to work that outside corner. Every once in a while he'll stand you up a little bit and try and come to that. Inside corner, but right here, see fastball down and away. Kemp anticipating the pitch out there, drives right through it and finds that deep, empty space here at Peco Park out by the beach, right center field. Mentioned that's a rare run against Dallas. His last two starts, a total of 15 innings of scoreless baseball. Nine innings last time out and a no decision at Oakland. 
And he picked up a win against the Angels working six shutout innings just two hits allowed in each one of those ball games and through the first three hitters today he has allowed two hits. Justin Upton gets the benefit on that check swing. Well this would be an enormous out for Dallas to get without a run scoring. It's one and one. Keichel has thrown 11 consecutive quality starts. Infield playing back so a ground ball gets a run but there's the pop up. So Keiko gets exactly what he could have hoped for. Tough battle there for Altuve but he wins out. And now you've got two outs. A man at third base and Will Middlebrooks coming to the plate. You know Dallas Keiko is going to continue to battle. He's not going to give in on anything. Doesn't matter what's going on around him. He will keep his composure and continue to battle. But no offense to those other ball clubs as you see him coming into the kitchen of Justin Upton. Gets him to pop up with a man at third, which was huge. This is a tough sun field for the second baseman. You can see Altuve battling with it. But for me, this might be the best lineup the Keuchel's had to face all season. That's intriguing. And these Padres came into the series as one of the top-ranked offensive clubs in the National League. And I think when you add Matt Kemp and Justin Upton right there in the heart of the order, it makes them about as tough for a pitcher to deal with as anybody. And with Solarte, the number two hitter, the only switch hitter in the group, that makes the entire lineup a right handed lineup against Dallas Keuchel. Of course, we skip Will Myers at the top, and he's yet to prove himself as a big league hitter, but looks like he's really coming into his own with the bat. Ground ball up the middle, Altuve with the play, and Keuchel's going to get out, yielding just one run in the first inning, so he really battles to get up in the middle first with a man at third. Through one, it's 1 0 San Diego. The Astros, as we've been talking about, Philly really good in that clubhouse. One thing I liked was Luis Valbuena saying, this is a family. We're helping each other out. We're picking each other up. And they had to after the first couple of games of the season. It didn't go so well for them. They did get a win in that series. But you see the difference since those first three games, the batting average in particular there, uh, under 100. And we'll see this graphic one more time. But since 259, uh, just all across the board, five runs compared to just one run uh, in average in that game. Earlier this season, that was, of course, a tough pitching matchup as far as that series went, guys, in, in Cleveland. And the Indians have a very good starting staff. Thanks, Julia. George Springer at the plate has a ball and a strike. This would seem, Blummer, to me, to be the type of pitcher that would give George Springer the toughest time. Yeah, and because of that 95 plus mile an hour fastball, we haven't seen George really catch up to the cheese yet this season. He's done a great job of hitting some off speed pitches last night. He drove a, it looked like a changeup out of the ballpark. Deep into the night. Then he came back with the base hit up the middle on a slider. One and two on Springer. Fastball just inside. The catcher Nieves pointing, saying that's exactly where we wanted it. 
That's a tough pitch to hit. 96 in on the hands. Tough one to take, too. Springer down on strikes. That's four consecutive now for Kashner. When will we see George Springer be able to put a handful of games together where the, the bat looks like he's found it? The sooner the better. So Kashner in an inning and a third. Four strikeouts on the season. He has 25 and a third innings pitched and now 30 strikeouts. So he's a high strikeout guy against a high strikeout ball club. But we obviously saw last night the runs can be produced even if they strike out a ton. That's been back to back nights of a lot of strikeouts for the Astros hitters and yet huge runs. Colby Rasmus at the plate with a 1 1 count. And Colby has been a big part of the offense in recent games. Hitting 254, three dingers. Ooh, that changeup. Very effective looking. Rasmus took an 0 for in last night's game, going 0 for 4, but did score a run as he had walked once, had three strikeouts on his night. And Colby entered the fray in terms of the stolen base game. The Astros have been great in that department. Colby stole one on the night. Power and running. That's what the Astros have done. Is that a changeup or a slider? There's a little slider. The Astros are first in the American League in home runs at 28 as you watch that tough little slider. So they lead the league in home runs and the stolen base game they have 26 that leads the league. So when you talk power and speed in terms of stealing bags. This is the ball club on top of everybody at the moment. Chris Carter has hit in seven straight. Dual threat Astros. Well, offensively people always talk about power and speed. That's where you want to go right. Yeah. Got a great combination of it going right now. The Astros as a club with a 239 batting average. That's 10th in the league. One and two the count on Chris, and I'm not sure you want to get deep into a count right now with Andrew Kashner. Early on, showing great command of all three pitches: fastball, slider, changeup. He's a strike away from striking out the first six he faces on the afternoon. And just getting a piece is Carter. When you talk running game for the Astros, Altuve and Springer each with eight stolen bases. Jake Marisnik has six. So those are the big boys. Two and two on Carter. Six consecutive strikeouts for Andrew Kashner. Great stuff early. Dallas Keuchel has his hands full.
Presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare right now at southwest.com. And by Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's blazing chicken sandwich. The SS Blummer, that's what I'm hearing. Now we know I've been taking that back to the house after the game. Be out there in the harbor cruising by. Well, you've got every right as we go to the bottom of the second inning. One nothing Padres. RBI triple by Matt Kemp in the first inning. Jed Jerko leads off here in the second inning. Has a ball and a strike. He'll be followed by Clint Barmas and Will Nieves. Keichel missing inside. Boy, Dallas Keichel, you can almost count on a great effort from Dallas every time. What you can't count on is facing a guy like Andrew Kashner today who struck out the first six he's faced. Although the Astros in terms of strikeouts offensively. Well they are dead last in the American League in terms of the punch outs. Oh boy, that's close. That's a good pitch. That inside corner is. Hard to get to at the moment. Kashner has been in there trying to find it. And a 3 2 count. Keichel always likes to work quickly. Keichel has gotten just one ground ball out. That was Will Middlebrooks to end the first. Back to very rare first inning for Dallas. A couple of outs were recorded with balls in the air. Solarte flied to center field. Justin Upton. The key out right now as he popped to second base for a big second out had a runner at third base at that point. Ground ball to third. Well point of backs and makes a good throw out number one in the second. What Dallas is going to have to do is get away from these two and three ball counts now or it could turn out to be a shortened afternoon. That would be excessive work for Dallas Keuchel. It's pretty economical in his last outing. Out there in Oakland, going nine strong. In those nine innings, through 106 pitches. Three of his four starts have gone over 100 pitches. So Keuchel finds the strike zone. Barm is playing at shortstop this afternoon. First start on the series. And now Keichel in front 0-2. And makes you wonder if the Padres might have a, a game plan of trying to take some pitches, see if they can get Keichel out of there quickly. Of course, that's all well and fine, but the Astros bullpen is second best in the league. And I think that just going back to the numbers that I rattled off earlier 18 strikeouts coming into this game for Dallas Keuchel but 11 walks also so that tells you that he works on the edges so it might be a good idea or a game plan that they're working with is to take some pitches on Dallas Keuchel see where that strike zone's at see where what edge of the plate he's working on and adjust from there and I think noteworthy already mentioned but Keuchel in his last two starts each one of them allowing just two hits two hits already in the first inning through the first three hitters he faced this afternoon. Strike three call right at the knees on the 2 2 change. Barnes caught looking for a strikeout for Keiko. Remember, it's not where the catcher catches, it's where it crosses the plate. That ball did look down by the time it got to Conger, but this dead fish changeup just floats in there. And according to the home plate umpire, catches the bottom edge of the zone. Could have had a seam on the bottom of the knees. You know what's interesting about the hits you're talking about Dallas giving up that triple by Matt Kemp is only the third extra base hit given up by Dallas Keuchel. Kemp perfectly split the gap in right center field with one out in the first inning. Will Myers had led off with a solid base hit to right field. Little tapper, a couple of hops to third valve, went up bare hands and makes it beautifully a one, two, three inning with a couple of ground outs.
home runs with the Dodgers and Blue Jays. And we know that Sock is in the bat. It's just nice to see these guys starting to connect on some of these, playing at some big ballparks on this road trip. But with the power they have, they can shrink them in a heartbeat. That's a big bat that's going to be missed in that lineup. Jason Castro hitting the bomb in some grown man territory. The Lumberjack throwing some wood around. It's good to see these guys swing the bats. And as we alluded to, too, that offense, when they get on base after some of those walks, they wreak havoc. Well, you mentioned some contact. The Astros could use some right about now as Jake Marisnik leads off the third inning. They have not made contact to this point. Six consecutive strikeouts. Altuve, Gonzalez, Balbuena, Springer, Rasmus, and Carter through the first two innings. Kastner gives up the high chopper over third base and down the line. Marisnik is at it again and has a leadoff double here in the third inning. Jake Marisnik has been fantastic. Thank goodness for that guy. That's his fourth two bagger of the year. Well, your speedy guy like Jake Marisnik, the threat of a bunt brings that third baseman in on a day game like this and a hard. Surface out in front of you, just smash it in the ground and get that colossal chop double. That's the one that everybody back when there were AstroTurf fields would say, well, it was an AstroTurf hit, and all the ball would do is hit the dirt out in front of home plate. But perception seemed to be everything. Hank Conger gets the start today. Starts have been rare, but he's had some impact for the club with his bat, hitting 167. Big game winning home run in Arlington that in a Dallas Keuchel start. One ball and one strike and Keuchel waits on deck or should be there. At the moment the on deck circle is vacant. He's trying to figure out which helmet will fit over his beard. <laughs> Found one. Does that change things. Oh, no I'm surprised he doesn't have that uh, face guard. But in this case, it would be a beard guard to protect that thing. Conger able to hold back has a 3 1 count. Nobody out, a man at second base. We're in the third inning, 1 0 San Diego. Be fun to see Hank Conger get the head out on one of these 96 mile an hour fastballs. It's one of those at bats that can mean a lot. Can you either drive in the run or have a productive at bat moving the runner up? Instead, a walk of Conger, and now. Dallas Keuchel will be called upon you would think to lay down the bunt. Luckily Keuchel's a good enough athlete that I have faith in him to be able to do it but it's a lot to ask a big league pitcher in the American League to come over here in his first plate appearance try and lay down 96. Yeah. And the left hand you always worry about that hand moving up the bat and trying to bunt at a pitch. You start going. 95 plus and it's kind of a laser coming to the plate so not easy for these pitchers. And now the Padres faced with a bunt and runners at first and second apparently need to talk this over. Hey guys you remember we worked on this in spring training here's what we're going to do. That or he's pointing out that everybody looks delicious in their brown caps yeah. with the orange SD on it. I wonder if there could be some talk here about look, this guy's not accustomed to having a bat in his hands. If he bunts through a pitch, let's be a, a aware and ready for the possibility of throwing behind a base runner. Well, Marisnik at second base runs well, so he doesn't have to get an extended lead to make it to third base on a good bunt. And he doesn't really have to anticipate that ball being down. His pure raw speed should get him to third easily. So here we go. Turning to Bunt Keichel and takes low. The ball gets away from Nieves and alertly into third base is Jake Marisnik. This guy's a very good base runner. It was beautiful. And no, Hank Conger did not trail that run. That's a tough read. Because if Nieves comes up and tries to fire to second base, they probably have a better chance of getting Conger. But you can see the reaction of Jake Marisnik is pretty good. And as soon as that double clutch happens from Will Nieves, Marisnik's an easy. And minus the double clutch, I think they had a great shot at Marisnik. I do too, but that's the thing. The speed forces them to yep. make the play. It goes as a pass ball, a little half swing by Keiko, who now gets to swing the bat. Ooh, what's going through his head right now? Man, this stuff looks different than I anticipated. 
he has a dial he's trying to dial it up right now. Fastball is just pumped through at 96 is it. 90. Yeah 96 on the scoreboard here. So if, if there's a pitch up underneath the chin of Dallas Keiko and it hits the beard is that a hit by pitch. That's amazing. Has that ever been called in Major League Baseball. Good take. I'm swinging at that. There had to be a day back in the gas house gang and <laughs> and that kind of baseball where that happened right. <laughs> Ball lodged in the beard. Yeah. Two and two the count. Strike three called outside corner painted. Michael thinks about it decides well give me that call and I won't even say a word right now. That's a key first out here in the inning. Just off that outside edge. Strikeout number seven for Kashner. Back to the top, Jose Altuve. And I'm taking the strikeout instead of the double play off of Keiko's oh, bat. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Of course, the double play would likely get you tied. Here's a fly ball to left field, hit pretty well. Deep enough to score the run. Here comes Melisnik to throw to the plate high enough that Conger should have easily been able to read it and move into second base. Instead, he's still at first. Sack fly for Altuve. And the Astros have caught him at one. I'm with you, Ash. It's all about taking an extra 90 feet. You know that throw is going to be coming home. You might as well go back, tag up, and take a lead and see where that throw is. As Altuve does what he does, he takes advantage of driving that runner in. Less than two outs on third base. But that throw clearly going over the cutoff man, Will Middlebrook's head. Should have been an easy read for Conger to get to second base. Yeah, you said it perfectly. You, you take off with a few strides and then read the throw and just keep going when you see that it's too high to be cut. Marwin Gonzalez now bats with the man at first rather than in scoring position at second. Two outs in the inning. Altuve just nonchalantly almost able to drive in that run. Marwin. Like the first six hitters of the ball game for the Astros, struck out that in the first. Well, it's a good looking assortment. Yeah, you put a power arm like Kashner's with that great off speed he's working with. That makes for real tough at bats. Looks like he's got one over the top, a little slide piece, change up, fastball mid 90s. And the 0 2. That is not easy to get a piece of that high heater. By the way, real quickly on the scoreboard, one game is completed already today. That is from Baltimore. The Orioles hosting the White Sox. No fans in the stands with the problems going on in downtown Baltimore. And the Orioles won at 8 to 2. I'll let Blummer tell you the key stat in that game. As just away, it's 1 and 2. That would be the time of game. Two hours and three minutes they got that done. Ten runs scored in that ball game in a nine inning game. Yet it was played in two hours and three minutes. So you're telling me there is motivation that could make players play a little more quickly than we see. Well I think that they're going to put that one in the memory bank and make it a blueprint for everybody else to go by because that's pretty impressive. There are no fans from that game that can verify there was a game played in two hours and three minutes but hopefully. It does get passed around. Marlon well, spoils again. And it was broadcast. It was on in the media dining room. That game was on TV, so you can't blame it on the TV end of it. Probably just, a, I mean, eight runs doesn't tell you it was a well pitched. There's a good look at Camden Yards with nobody but White Sox and Orioles in it. It's a right. crazy look. That had to be strange. Again, Marlon fouls it down the left side. Did they, did they pipe in crowd noise? Well, they let them. Samarja got beat up, huh? Chris Davis Goodness. playing the launch game. He's trying to hit one out to the fans. Good grief. Boy, that had to feel weird How in that ballpark. Hitting a home run and having nobody cheer. That's got to be bizarre. Teammates were forced to play the silent treatment today. Two hours and three minutes. That's oh. what 55 minutes quicker than the average pace this year. That's putting the tomahawk chop all over game time. Man. Manny Machado had three hits in that one. 
he's probably thinking right about now. I love playing in front of no fans. <laughs> Talk about no stress. Right now, this man right here, Marwin Gonzalez, is just a nuisance to what Kasher is trying to accomplish. But he's got that choke up style, little short swing. He would figure to be a guy that could get some part of the bat to the ball. The Astros picking up a run here in the third inning. A leadoff double by Jake Marisnik is the key. Jose Altuve with a sack fly. And for Altuve, RBI number 14. So he's becoming a big run producer on top of everything else. One hopper to second. Jerko makes the play. And that'll do it for Houston in the third. They get the run to tie it. That one. And we get a peek at Mike Scott and that great no hitter to clinch in the West. Is up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Dallas Keiko working with Hank Conger again today. A little bit had to do with giving Jason Castro the day off, but these two worked really well with each other in Oakland when Dallas threw those nine shutout innings. Of course, after that one, Dallas wasn't exactly happy with the entire performance. The two walks really disappointed him. He said, I didn't didn't know where my fastball was going, my two seam at the time, didn't know where it was going. The crosswinds maybe had something to do with it. Conger telling me that they threw all fastballs in those first two innings. And after getting out of the third inning, a double play after the, with the bases loaded. He said he settled down, finally had command of it, and from there, the slider being the big pitch, guys. Thanks, Julia. No crosswinds to deal with here in San Diego this afternoon. That first pitch very close, but called a ball on the opposing pitcher, Andrew Kashner, and now a 1-1 count. Kashner can hit. He's a good athlete. Showing butt is Kashner as he takes the breaking ball and a one two count. You know what I said as a third baseman when I saw a pitcher try and drag butt on me? Do it. <laughs> Bring it up. Huh? Yeah, just go ahead yeah. and do it. Give me the out. Now you mentioned that Kashner can swing it. He's one for eight on the season. It's a lofty 125 mark. He's down on strikes. Geichel knows enough about him to bring the breaking ball. Today's league leaders are brought to you by your local Honda dealer. Let's see what we got. Lowest opponent average versus off speed pitch. Dallas Keiko. Gosh. 061. That's pretty good. A couple of good lefties on the top of that list. Francisco Liriano having himself a good year to start out also. But both left handers can throw in that 90 mile an hour range, work on both sides of the plate, but have excellent change ups and put away sliders. Will Myers stands in. He had a base hit in the first inning and scored the Padre run. Gets one in the air to center field. Marisnik with the play and two outs quickly here in the third inning. You know, you mentioned of those two left handers at the top of that list, the change up on each guy. And, and probably a big key in what they're able to do. 
Yeah, because that fastball is really not going to blow the doors off too many big league hitters. But the fact that they're able to spot it on that outside corner consistently, every once in a while sneak one up under, underneath your hands, and then throw that change up out of the same arm slot and same delivery makes them quite effective. There's the outside corner. So Larte at the plate, fly to center in the first inning. RBI triple for Matt Kemp. That for the Padres. And Al Jose Altuve with a RBI sack fly driving in the lone Houston run. I think the Padres and their fans have gotten a good look at what Jose Altuve is all about in this series. And I'm sure. A lot of curiosity about Dallas Keuchel in that 062 ERA as he came into play today. If Dallas throws eight shutout innings behind that first inning, he will still see the ERA rise today, and that tells you how good he's been. It's kind of crazy to think about. Little ground ball to second. That's the way he does his work. Altuve with the play and a one, two, three, third inning. Eight in a row retired by Dallas Keuchel. There right now at southwest.com. Got a good one going on in San Diego. You know, they've got pretty good stuff, I guess you could say, going on on the beach. But right here at the ballpark, Petco, it's a 1 1 game. Two hits for San Diego, one for Houston. Luis Valbuena leads off in the fourth inning against Andrew Kashner, who has shown exceptional stuff here today. Valbuena struck out in the first inning, seven strikeouts. All ready for Kashner. Good looking change up on the 1 0. From what I've seen from Kashner here today, I would expect him to be among the leaderboards in, in terms of National League pitching. Yeah, that 1 and 3 record's a little deceiving. And he falls behind Kashner as we lay the jinx on him. Three and one. Starting here in the fourth inning, it's Valbuena, Springer, and Rasmus. Kashner has been spectacular. Count now fills. Over the last three starts for this big right hander, just two runs allowed. Two earned runs. Goes against the Dodgers in his last start. Two previous starts, not an earned run against the Cubs or Diamondbacks. 
That's where he's getting a lot of run support then, huh? Apparently not a whole lot. He went one and two in those three starts. He'd been roughed up a bit by the Dodgers and Giants in the two starts prior to those. Fly ball right field. Glass is gleaming for Matt Kemp, and he is battling. And somehow comes up with this fly ball. Oh, he's up there forever, too. Well, that ball goes up, that right side of the infield, but this ball's hit so high that I guarantee you, Matt Kemp, the further he moved in, and the higher that ball got, the more it got into the sunlight. That's an extreme battle. It almost looked like the last five feet. He had no idea where it was. It's just a pretty good guess. Watch his eyes go down. I guess watch the head go down. You can't quite see it there, but you're right. Uh, there was no way he could see that. Uh, hot shot by George Springer down the left field side. Off the wall quickly, but Springer with way too much speed has a one out double. Oh, that's the swing that you just wonder. When can you start seeing that on a regular basis? Off speed. It's a hanging slider from Kashner. We hinted earlier that he has a tough time with some of these guys that throw 95 plus miles an hour, but this is a slider that backs up on the middle third of the plate. He turns on it. Double number five for George Springer. Colby Rasmus with an opportunity man in scoring position. One out here in the fourth. That's one of those swings from Springer that we saw on a number of occasions during a prolonged hot streak last year where you just wonder if he gets under it just a fraction how far the ball might actually go. This one's going to go a long way. Colby Rasmus, the big fly. Two run shot here in the fourth inning, and the Astros take the lead. 3 1, Houston on top. Joggernaut. Number four on the year for Colby. Now, if you go back to Colby's first at bat, a ton of change ups. Good change ups from Andrew Cashner. Colby can't hit the fastball. That's why the scouting report says throw him a changeup. But if you throw a left handed hitter a hanging changeup like this one right here, that's eerily similar to the one that Jed Lowry hit first game of this series against the San Diego Padres. A hanging changeup that he launched out here. But a guy that's swinging the bat well like Colby Rasmus, and you make a mistake, it's going to get crushed. That's a big time swing. Again, fourth home run for Colby. He now has nine RBIs. One out. So Springer and Rasmus coming up with very big swings in the inning. Got away with one right there, too. Breaking ball that stayed up a bit for Chris Carter, who again has a seven game hitting streak. Can Chris Carter have a quiet seven game hitting streak? If he put his batting average up first, yes. <laughs> Little tapper is foul. Well, he's hitting 174 as he stands in. Strikeout victim in the second. So he's hitting 174 in his current seven game streak. He's hitting 346. Gives you an idea of where he's come from. Fastball got the inside edge. Carter caught looking. Second time he goes down on strikes. That's eight for Kashner, but Kashner is trailing three to one here in the fourth inning. From last night's game, 10 extra base hits. It was uh, just an all out assault from the Astros. Well, they've got pop, and those home runs are just adding to those leads that they have in the American League. Shooting all of baseball, they're tied, or they may have taken a jump on the Dodgers and Blue Jays here with that bomb right there. Jake Marisnik had a double and scored in the third inning, scored on the sack fly by Jose Altuve. Good expo on that. Watch it enjoy. Up. Man, that extension. And he does everything in his power to get out and around that baseball and hook that thing. Count it 0 2 on Jake. Boy, this guy has been such a big part of the success of the team. That double in the third inning, his fourth of the year. 
And down on strikes. That's a tough slider. Couple of strikeouts in the inning. Nine on the game for Cashner, but he trails it three to one here in the fourth inning. For tickets, call 1-877-9-ASTROS or visit astros.com. The Astros in San Diego for just one final day, a big military hub, the San Diego Naval Base just around the corner. And you can also visit the museum, the USS Midway, which was one of the longest serving aircraft carriers in U.S. Navy. You're looking at a replica behind me. This thing is huge. It's in right field. But if you do get a chance to check out Petco Park, make sure to see the wall that recognizes all the Major League Baseball players who've served our country, including Ted Williams and Jerry Coleman, guys. Thanks, Julia. And very important stuff. San Diego does a fantastic job of representing and appreciating what the military has done in the area. A lot of off the field opportunities for players to go into some of these, uh, you, you, you know, naval hospitals and visit with some of the guys. Uh, there will be trips up to Camp Pendleton to visit with the Marines up there. Every Sunday they wear the camouflage tops to uh, honor the military. They invite groups, they put them in the stands and let them enjoy a baseball game every now and then. They take a lot of pride in representing that, that part of the military. You know what I remember about my years of playing in San Diego was, and I think it was usually, I don't know, weekend games anyway, where the, the Marines or the Navy would come in and they'd have massive groups out in some portion of, of the ballpark watching the ball game. And I just thought it was one of the most special things. Yeah, it's a good tradition. They started here in San Diego. 3-1 Houston on top. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Matt Kemp drove in the only San Diego run. Jerry Coleman and Ted Williams, a couple of the names that big military guys associated with this area. Of course, Ted Williams from San Diego. Jerry Coleman at one time the manager of the Padres. A longtime broadcaster. Counted three and two now as Matt Kemp leads off. Kemp had a triple in the first inning. He'd be followed by Justin Upton and Will Middlebrooks. Ground ball back up the middle. Altuve is close by, has to backhand and throw quickly to get the out. Nicely done by Jose. Funky hop for Altuve. Ball was kind of hit right out of it. Instead of rounding it off and going towards first base, he came directly out of it. You see that hop kind of getting on his right hand side, but does a great job of backhanding it. Good exchange and good throw. You know what? I'm really glad to see the use of the glove there rather than the barehanded effort. Always. Dallas Keuchel appreciates the fine play. With one out, it brings up Justin Upton. It was Upton who, with one out and a man at third base in the first inning, Padres already on top one and nothing. Popped out. And that was enormous.
was for Keichel, and here's a great play by Jake Marisnik. Over the head, Justin Upton had given it a ride, and Jake Marisnik, one of the game's truly outstanding defensive center fielders. Uh, he's going to start landing himself on some highlight reels. The only thing is he runs so quick and gets the ball so well, he doesn't turn him into great plays, but this ball was smoked over his head. Got himself a great jump. You see how much Keichel appreciates it. Pretty damn good play. Two outs and both very nice plays. Resnick looked like he had a bit of a sheepish smile as if he wasn't too proud of his landing there. Ain't nobody watching the landing. They're watching how great <laughs> the takeoff was. Well, Middlebrooks. Also one of the big outs in the first inning. He batted with two outs and a man at third and grounded out Altuve making the play on that one. So the Padres in that first inning could have it by the book should have extended the lead to two to nothing. And the Astros have taken advantage leading it three to one. Another strike. Let's take another look at that catch by Jake Marisnik. Some good camera angles. Nice leap. Thank goodness for the padded wall, huh? See that smile there at the end. Looking over at Springer. I wonder if Springer was giving him a tough time. There were some times I had a chance to play here in San Diego with a guy named Mike Cameron, who I thought could flat out go get it, one of the best center fielders I've ever seen. And I felt myself occasionally watching plays and just watching as a fan in awe. I wonder if that's how George Springer was right there and watching or isn't it go back and get that thing. Now the three ball count is Will Middlebrooks is at the plate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's, oh you know what it is. There's Springer giving some love I'm sure. Well when Marisic came off the wall his hat went yep. flying you can almost see him trying to make yep. the play on the hat. Yeah. <laughs> Give me my hat back a little tapper to the mound. Keiko one of the best in the game defensively. Gets the out a couple of ground ball outs in the fourth inning. He's sailing along thanks to some defense. 3 1 Houston. Standing defense. They've played long ball with Colby Rasmus hitting his fourth on the year. And the boys are just playing some serious hardball right now. By the way, story Adam Wainwright, who tore his Achilles tendon while he was batting this year, and all the questions about whether the DH needs to come to the National League. He says, no way. Don't change a thing. And so, kind of an intriguing comment coming out of Adam Wainwright. Line shot, Hank Conger. And it's grabbed. The shortstop bonus in a shift able to go back and make the play. So Conger robbed leading off the fifth. It's a nice play right there. Off the end of the bat, kind of like a swinging changeup. Barmas does a good job of putting his foot on the gas, running out there and making that play. Nice.
to Andrew Kashner, big right hander who has nine strikeouts, enjoys out number one. Dallas Keiko comes to the plate. Eight, nine, one here in this fifth. And National League pitchers have to love innings like this where you start it with the eight hitter. You hope you get the out and then you work through the pitcher spot. Dallas Keuchel struck out looking in the third inning has an 0 2 count here. The Astros picked up a run to tie it in the third inning. They got a leadoff double from Marisnik. He moved up on a pass ball. And then scored on a sack fly by Jose Altuve and then a two run bomb by Rasmus coming in the fourth. And for the second time this afternoon, Keiko caught looking out number two. Good thing he can pitch. Well, you were anticipating a big bat from Keiko. And it was. Does everything else so great? Well, we are already in the double digit strikeout column. Good grief. Way to go, Dallas. Oh, so you're laying it on the pitcher. <laughs> Jose Altuve has one of those strikeouts, also the sack fly. 14 RBIs and diving stop by Barmas, but he'll never get Jose Altuve as he just sprints on down the line. Another base hit for Jose. Eight game hitting streak. And we all just simply enjoy watching this guy play. Yeah, you're exactly right. Great effort by Barmas, but really never a chance for him to get Jose Altuve, who was constantly hustling down that line at first base. And ho hum, just another hit, 32 yep. on the season. Yeah, that's about it. Altuve leading the league in hits, easily leads the Astros. The next closest, Jake Marisnik, who with the double today has 20. Marwin Gonzalez stands in and maybe looking to take a pitch or two, see if Altuve might be able to nab a bag. He also leads in stolen bases, tied with George Springer. Eight stolen bases already for the top stealing club in the American League. Well, that's a good looking heater. Even at 92. And Marwin was taking, and maybe that smile on the face is, boy, I'd like to have that one back. We're already one pitch into the count. Now Tuve hasn't taken off yet. Just kind of edging to a short lead as the throw comes over. It's almost as if he knew the signs right there. He was close to the bag on that pickoff throw from Cashner. But Padre philosophy on pitching and base running is they want to focus on getting the hitter, not so much the uh, guy at first base. And today's T-Mobile game changer is the Astros larceny on the base pass. 13 on this trip and leading the league in steals overall. It's been a good road trip all the way around. Eight games, 13 stolen bases. Really causing issues here in San Diego. I believe we saw three games of three plus stolen bases from the Houston Astros on this road trip, also. Altuve not on the move. The pitch has popped up shallow in center field. Barmas the shortstop with the play, and that'll do it for Houston in the fifth inning. They get the two out single from Altuve and stranded, but lead it three to one. Headed to.
Culture 1980. Number one song by Blondie, Call Me, top-selling book, The Born Identity, Robert Ludlum is the author, number one movie, Empire Strikes Back, best, best picture, Kramer v. Kramer. George Brett, the American League MVP, the National League, Mike Schmidt. Well, it takes you back, doesn't it? Or does it, Mr. Blunt? Oh, I remember the Empire Strikes Back. Are you kidding me? You remember George Brett? Yeah, that other good third baseman in the National League. That yeah. was the year of the third baseman. How about those two guys? Did they motivate you at all to become a, a third baseman along the way? Nope. I, I, bit, I, no, I was a middle infielder. I came up as a shortstop the whole way, and I was a big fan of Cal Ripken Jr. See a guy six plus feet playing shortstop, I latched on to him. The Cal was about your size, yeah. right? About six four. Yep. Yeah, and I actually was lucky enough to be able to play against Cal and meet, meet him and talk to him a little bit, and that was that was pretty special. Did he look at you and say you're too big to be a shortstop? Absolutely not. <laughs> He's like, we need more of you guys hanging around, and I totally appreciated that. You know what's funny? funny you bring that up. I'm in double A in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And doing an autograph signing and Pete Rose comes through and he's a part of this autograph signing. They kind of have us tucked off in a corner and they bring Pete over and uh, we introduce ourselves and you know, he's, he's making good conversation. We're talking about some things. And he looks at me and he goes, well, what position do you play, son? I said, well, I'm, I play shortstop and some second base. Line shot by Jerko, but Altuve is there. He's everywhere. And out number one. And he says, well, you're too darn big to be playing up the middle and walked off. So that was my introduction <laughs> to Pete Rose. But we'll go back to the time machine because we're doing it right now. It's on the screen. Average Cesar Cedeno, 309. That was a pretty good Astros team out there in the 80s, Ash. Yeah, it was a, a, a talented bunch, but it was really led by the pitching staff. And Joe Negro was the king at the time. He was on back-to-back -back years of winning 20-plus games. Joe Sambito would go on and hurt his arm. And that, you know what? There was J.R. Richard went down, Joe Sambito and Dickie Thon all in a relatively oh, short period of time for a ball club that had a chance to be really special. One out for Clint Barmas. So that's all you've got on the Pete Rose story, huh? Yeah, that was my that's the, that was my interaction with him. He, he was nice enough, but <laughs> the second I told him I played up the middle, he was just like, yep, you're too darn big and walked off. That was his wow. scouting report. Pitch is fouled back. Well, you are too darn big. You're not supposed to be able to do what you did as that big a guy, and the same would be true for uh, Cal Ripken. There just are very few guys your size that were able to play that position. Carlos Correa, big man there that could play some shortstop. Yes, so there, there are some of those taller athletes still floating around. Swinging a foul tip, hung on to by Hank Conger. That's two outs here in the fifth inning. Third strikeout for Dallas Keuchel. Well, it brings up an intriguing conversation. Carlos Correa is not quite as heavy, maybe, as you and, and Cal Ripken, but maybe moving in that direction. A Rod, another guy that was maybe not quite as tall, but kind of that same body. Yeah, that long, lanky body. But yes, yeah, throughout the course of, the, of your major league career, you figure out where the spread is, and you get that big league mill money, and pounds start to get on a little bit. But uh, Shortstop is usually reserved for the smaller, quicker athlete, but there are some guys that are big enough to create some smaller angles. Well, look, if the big guy can play at shortstop, get the job done well, and then you get the benefit of his big time bat, when you add the extra offensive guy at a position that generally doesn't produce offense, what a difference in the lineup. Absolutely. Eight hitter Will Nieves, the catcher at the plate. Took a barehanded effort by Val Buena at third base to get him to end the second inning. Dallas Keuchel has never felt today to me like he's been totally locked on, and yet he's on quite a roll. He's retired 13 in a row, just misses the inside edge. And even with that pitch missing on that inside corner, it's just enough to let those guys know that he will come inside to you. So you can't give up on that inner third. Just sit on the outside corner on Dallas Keuchel. Breaking ball hit the air left field. Rasmus is there and makes the play. A 1-2-3 fifth inning. 14 in a row retired by Dallas Keuchel as his throws lead it 3-1. to one.
professionals from around Houston, the Houston air Houston while enjoying an extended happy hour in the Bud patio from 5 p.m. to 6 30. I need to go to this. For more information, visit Astros.com slash young professionals or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Maybe there'll be a speech therapist there. I, I thought I saw with. you just come back from there. Man, good grief. Reading comprehension. Padres fans are saying good grief right about now. 3-1 Houston. Game three is the Astros trying to make it back to back sweeps coming out of Oakland of all places with a sweep and now into San Diego. There's a couple of nevers that could be wiped off the yeah. history books for the Houston Astros. About an eight and one road trip to the West Coast. Man. Starting in Seattle, then on to Oakland and San Diego. And you may not have a feel for San Diego, but the Padres, as Jeff Blum has been talking about, are a really good looking club right about now. I was excited to see we were coming through here, especially after those moves that A.J. Preller made here in San Diego. But now seeing the Astros match up with them quite well. And to be honest, putting a hurting on them in the last couple days with runs scored. It's been pretty, pretty nice to see. Pitch is hammered to right field by Valbuena and up and over Matt Kemp. Extra bases again, I think so. Lead off double Valbuena as the Astros try to kick start something here in the sixth inning. All kinds of impressive. Any mistake in the zone is getting waffled by Astro hitters. And they don't care where they're at. Think about the ballparks we've been at on this road trip. Safeco Field, large ballpark. Oakland ball doesn't carry that well. Petco Park, not known for home giving up home runs, but these guys continue to drive the ball out of the ballpark and rack up doubles. And there's a couple tri triples sprinkled in there too. 10 extra base hits yesterday and the Astros are playing that game once again. Four extra base hits here today as they've put together a three to one lead. George Springer swings right through one a one one count. When are they going to go away from the off speed on George? I don't know. They're trying to find their way against a lot of these hitters in this lineup. Springer has struck out looking and doubled scored a run that was number two. And the go ahead run. Of course, it was an easy score for George. He was aboard when Colby Rasmus launched one to right field. You see George square up 96. That could be fun. Fly ball to right field and fairly deep. Kemp has a beat on it. He'll make the catch. Tagging and moving to third base is Val Buena, and that's a quality at bat. Exactly. The same thoughts right there, Ash. George trying to go the other way, possibly on the ground, but playing a good team offensive game. Move the runner to third base, get him 90 feet closer for Colby Rasmus to try and drive him in with less than two outs. Infield will draw in. Colby Rasmus at the plate. Colby has struck out and homered. That was number four on the year for Colby. He now has nine ribbies. Three for 11 on the series. He's a really good outfielder and a dangerous hitter. Pops one foul to the seats. Tacking on a fourth run right here in this sixth inning would be very big for Dallas Keuchel. Speaking of off-speed pitches, he got himself a hanging change and after seeing a bunch in that first A-B. And that's pretty. If you've got the pop in the the arm length to go out there and get around a change up. Go ahead and do it. You look where Colby holds his hands out over the plate and you would think you'd be able to get in on him pretty consistently. But he is that guy just like you say he goes around the baseball he'll get the barrel to it. Just inside Kashner wanted that one. Well, I've talked to some hitters who actually get their hands that far away from their body. They don't stand as close to the plate as Colby does, but a lot of the reasons they do that is to get the hands away from the body. They say clears up some space to get their hands maybe moving a little bit freer through the zone. Watch what Colby does, though. As he makes his stride, the hands come back to the body right here. So that 
So it kind of tells you or gives you the idea that might be his load or that right. itch that he needs to get his swing going. That movement that uh, everybody has some kind of move that gets things going. And it's amazing. You'll, you'll look at every major league hitter. doesn't matter what they're doing, but when they're getting ready to swing the bat, 95% of them are in the same exact spot ready to fire. When that front foot is, is down, the guys tend to be in that same spot. You're exactly right. Pop fly left side. And it's going to stay in play. Making the play is Middle Brooks. And there's the second out. So now you're down to needing that key two out. I want to say hit, but of course you've also got the possibility of the wild pitch pass ball, something happening. And the Astros have taken advantage in this streak of just about everything possible. You know that Dallas Keuchel in the dugout right now on the third base side is thinking come on guys get that fourth run. Dallas has already had an unusual day allowing a run. Ground ball to short two big hops there for Barmas. He'll make the play Carter is out and that'll do it. They strand, strand rather about when at third base 3 1 Houston. Here in the southwest, San Diego, it's been great. Astros will head home for a seven-game homestand, taking on the Seattle Mariners for four games over the weekend in a midweek series with the Texas Rangers before heading back out west to Los Angeles to face those Anaheim Angels. And then a day off, going to get some San Francisco Giants, Toronto Blue Jays. Still in the division, though, for quite a while. And in the division, A.J. Hinch's guys, 10 and 5 over a 15 game span right in the division. So they got tested early and have passed the test very well. Andrew Kashner tries to bunt his way aboard. Has an 0-2 count here as he leads off in the sixth inning. Well, you're right, Jeff. That's a pretty good looking athlete as Kashner came sprinting out of the box. Three runs, five hits, an error for Houston. No, make that one run, two hits, no errors for San Diego. Seventy-two pitches for Dallas. Trying to get that first out here in the sixth inning. There's a note on the board. I saw it earlier that. Andrew Kashner struck out the first six batters of the game, and that's a club record for the San Diego Padres to begin to begin a game. And a 2-2 count. Well, many of these outs today 
haven't been that easy variety out that Dallas is accustomed to getting. Long shot in the center field. It's a leadoff single. So Andrew Kashner shows he can swing the bat. Well, no sooner than we talked about it, he steps up and does it. Does a good job of lacing that one up the middle. And of course, the pitcher breaks that string of consecutive outs for Dallas Keuchel. 15 consecutive outs to make that 14 consecutive for Dallas. So it's over now. Nobody out in the sixth inning. Top of the order, Will Myers at the plate. And what Dallas would love to get is that ground ball that creates a double play. He's not seen a double play today. Neither team with one. Anybody's going to get it. It's going to be Dallas Keuchel. Close to 70 percent. That ground ball rate. Will Myers a guy that runs really well. Yeah though Keuchel has been good. It feels a bit like that last start where. Dallas pitched extremely well and said he just never felt like he had the command all day. I don't know if that inside corner just simply doesn't exist today or if those pitches are all missing off the edge. The one pitch today that Dallas took advantage of working in was getting Justin Upton to pop out for the second out in the first inning. Got a fastball in the hands of the big left fielder and he popped it up a key second out as there was a man at third base at the time. Padres had that chance to jump on top two to nothing in the first inning. What a luxury having that change up in it. Hitters count you can go to it that 2 1 count. He just threw it to Will Myers and got a weak ground ball. So the strike is called. There you go. There is the inside corner. And Myers may have been set up for that. Fourth strikeout for Keiko, out number one. The 2 1 changeup he rolled over and then just a fastball in that inside corner may have had a little bit of cut. And you can see the velocity on it too 91 miles an hour. You see him normally pitching around 88, 89 miles an hour, but when the time comes, Dallas is a guy who can reach back and get a couple extra miles an hour on it. John Harvey's Solarte at the plate, 0 for 2 on the night, and way out in front, waving on the change. Most of the other action around Major League Baseball coming up this evening. Four finals in Milwaukee wins at 8 3 at Cincinnati. Fly ball right field. Coming in and now back a bit as Springer for the second out. Got some uh, who's hot, who's not going on around the bigs. Boy, Adam Jones has been off to a great start for the Orioles. Man, that Boston Red Sox rotation is just taking a beating. What's going on there? Red Sox, a lot of people thought might be the club to to win the American League this year. They added left-hander Wade Miley from the Diamondbacks over there. They thought that'd be a nice left-handed addition out there with Lester moving on, but it has not added up for them. Nine saves for Familia. We saw him the last series of the year last year. DJ LeMayhew has been red hot for the Rocks. Getting over 400 in the first month to lead everybody. Three hitter Matt Kemp at the plate. He batted in the first inning with Will Myers at first base and one out. Gapped one in right center field. It went to the wall and the pots jumped on top one zip. Kemp has tremendous opposite field pop too. And here he hit 39. He was one home run away from being a 40 40 guy, but. He came through Arizona was launching things off the batting eye in center field. Well you said it last night Kemp that year likely was the true MVP. I would, I would definitely put my vote in for him that year. Brian Braun won it that year. There's a lot of questions swirled and 
eventually the swirling landed right on him. Yeah, the swirls were answered. Matt Kemp with that triple in the first inning, just his second hit of the series. Laces one foul left side. See what happened to a right handed pitcher, Archie Bradley? No. Carlos Gonzalez for the Rockies hit a ball that came off his bat about 115 miles an hour and hit him square in the right cheek. Oh dear. Yeah, it was, it, 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 the replay was awful. Archie Bradley is okay, thank God, but it, it happened in a hurry and the sounds were awful. It was, was that yesterday? Yes. And it was just awful. Mm. But he is okay. He's on the 15 day, 15 day DL with a sinus fracture, but when it happened, it sounded looked a lot worse. Was it a glancing job no, or straight on? It squared him up. Mm. It's remarkable that that pitchers like the fans survive some of those line drives. Isn't that the truth? 2-2 Two -two to Kemp. Hit on the ground. Altuve is there. He'll feed on the second base for the force. And that'll do it. A leadoff single by the pitcher Kashner as they strand a man. Take on the Mariners. Come out early to enjoy dog friendly activities like a pooch parade, vendors expo, and much more. Get dog day tickets today by visiting astros.com slash dog day. We're in San Diego. And it's been everything advertised here for the three days, especially for the Astros bats. They have thoroughly enjoyed this trip. It's not like they have Drop the avalanche avalanche on anybody today, but they do lead three to one Dallas Keuchel on the mound. Bottom three in the order for Houston coming up here in the seventh inning. Jake Marisnik leads it off one for two with a double. And Marisnik continues to swing it very well. Seven game hitting streak now. Had two hits yesterday, one in the opener in the series. The velocity on the fastball from Kashner has seen a drop off since the first couple of innings, but still very good stuff. He has that change up he mixes in, a nice slider. Shaking his head, not getting the call on the change. And two and one the count. Jeff Blum was telling me before the game he got a chance to meet with some of the umpires and talking about the way they are consistently evaluated now. Fly ball to right field. Kemp with the play. 
Out number one here in the seventh inning, and, and the way it may be impacting the way they're calling ball games from behind the plate. Yeah, it was a pretty interesting conversation. I'm actually relatively good friends with third base umpire Jim Reynolds today, and second base umpire Paul Schreiber, and uh, I just caught him in the hallways underneath, passing him a little bit, and they said, "Come on in." So I went to the umpire's room for the first time and actually talked to these guys a little bit. And with all the analytics and data crunching that is going on these days, these guys are being evaluated every single day on every play they have on the base pass, every pitch that is thrown when they're behind the plate. So there is critiquing going on on a daily basis, and I believe they said they're getting graded on those things too. They get an email, pronounce, I mean, the whole nine yards. So these guys are under the microscope, and that for us, you and I, Ash, it explains why the corners are so tight. But explains why the, the zone is expanding up and down. Exactly as the ground ball goes to the right side. Shift on the shortstop. Barmas with the play. Conger grounds out. He's 0 for 2. And now with two outs and the base is empty. Dallas Keiko comes to the plate. And I say why not? Players are graded the same way all the time. If they don't get the job done. Bring on somebody else. And I'm, I'm glad to see it happen with the umpires. And I think you are exactly right with the top and bottom of the strike zone. Now coming back into play the way it should be. Dallas Keuchel has struck out looking twice. Pretty good swing. Pretty good swing. And and let me also say that those are two great guys. Just talking to them and that's what happens. That's the beauty of playing on the infield for me is that you have the ability to be 10 or 15 feet away from these guys calling a big league game and you get to have a conversation with them. Dallas Keuchel has the first hit for an Astros pitcher th this year. Grounding one up the middle. Just a chopper over the mound and Dallas Keuchel. Showing that he can swing the wood. Not as hard as Cashner's, but a little bit of payback. Turn that line up over and see what Dallas can do on the base pass. Actually, a pretty decent, nice little short stroke. I think the uh, Padre pitchers are going to talk to the grounds crew and have them put a little extra water out in front of home plate. What do you think? High chopper by Marisnik over the third baseman for a double early in the ball game. Yeah. That's softening that thing up. That sounds really hard coming off that area, doesn't it? Um, and again, playing here with uh, the great Greg Maddox, that was one of the things mm -hmm. you knew he was pitching when the groundskeeper would be out there hosing off the front of the plate. Altuve hits it in the air center field. That's a third out. Dallas Keiko went halfway just to make sure they weren't going to utilize four outs. When Tony Gwynn picked up hit 1,000 off the Astros, Nolan Ryan. Pretty nice drop shot right there. Yeah. I think I must have gotten shaken off on that uh, <laughs> that particular pitch. <laughs> How dare you? So this guy earned a statue for that kind of hit. For about 3,000 plus of those hits, Mr. Padre. What a player. Pitch. Great shot. That's actually a pretty good statue of contact right there for Tony Gwynn. Yes, it is. Oh, goodness. 
do you think of that comparison? That's amazing. I think it's great that you that Jose Altuve is playing well enough to actually be compared to this guy early in Altuve's career. But what a guy to match, try and match up against. That contact percentage is extremely high for Altuve. But look at what Tony Gwynn did. He exceeded it going up over 93%. Are you kidding me with the number of swings and the amount of time he made contact? Well, That's unreal. Top five all-time Tony Gwynn in terms of that contact percentage. Wade Boggs, did I miss number one? Oh. Wow. Now, Wade not only didn't swing and miss, he didn't swing and pop it up. Ever. I mean, he went one entire season where I believe he had one or two pop-ups over the course of the year. Joey Votto was putting up numbers like that too. They had a number on him in like three or four years, never pop, like popped up once in the infield. I don't know how it's possible. I've got some numbers I want to get to on Altuve in just a moment as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Astros leading it three to one behind Dallas Keuchel, who, by the way, with that base hit, picked up his third major league hit. Keuchel now three for 25, and first hit since 2012 for Dallas. But now the more important matter is the work from the mound. Pitch just inside. It's a ball on the strike. That's close. Justin Upton at the plate. Home plate umpire puts the nose on the corner and then gets backed away by the catcher. So things change at that point. Wow. Dugouts here at Petco are basically behind the hitters. And Justin Upton just turned on one and put it in the dugout. I say thank goodness dugout and not to the folks right above the dugout. <laughs> Justin Upton 0 for 2 on the day 21,824 on hand. And that was 21,824 more than they had in Baltimore today. Very astute of you to see that, Ash. Nice work. It's the kind of math that not everybody has perfected. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. Oh. Man, Michael would love to have that one, huh? That's to see me some strike zone right there. Does this one miss? Yes, I guess it does. Right on the fist, looper to second base. So the count went to three and two as Dallas gets pressed again, but he eventually gets that out and now has an out here in the seventh inning. Mention Jose Altuve with the bat. And for those of you wondering about how what he's been doing this year compares with last year, he has 32 hits. He's in his 21st game of the year. Last year, through 21 games, he had just 22 hits. Keep in mind, he won the batting title with 225. Hits on the course of the year. So Altuve is way in front of that pace from last year. And last year, he was hitting 265 at the time through 21 games. He is well over the 340 mark this year and just sailing along. So you're saying he's better than he was last year 10 hits better <laughs> through 21 games and he hasn't finished his 21st yet but will pop up Altuve it's pretty good with the glove too as he makes the play and the second out here in the inning he's doing a good job of getting inside on these hitters granted he's not getting some of the calls but you see when you're living on the edge like that the benefit of the doubt is going to go your way and the hitters going to try and fight those off but Padre hitters are not doing a very good job this, this afternoon. I'll tell you, it's tough as a pitcher catcher combination to keep coming in when you don't get calls. But as you said, it's a mandate that you do so. Two outs for Jerko, the second baseman. Signed a big contract as a young player here in San Diego, and for the moment, not living up to the terms of that deal. In terms of success, anyway, on the field. Jerko 0 for 2 on the day. And the batting average at 137. Pretty quick bat right there. 
Thayer in the San Diego Padre bullpen. Neshek and Qualls in the Houston Astros bullpen. So we've got some activity going on down there. Dallas Keuchel probably in his last inning. That's the 103rd pitch. He can play some D and he makes a nice one. And a 1 2 3 seventh inning. Dallas Keuchel has allowed just one base runner since the first inning. On the Mariners, 10,000 fans will receive a Jose Altuve hit counter bobblehead presented by Goya. For more info, visit Astros.com or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Guys, I'm at the beach. <laughs> now there's no the water around, but right field is right to my left here. This is pretty cool. They do call this area the beach. Kids are having a great time, and I'm learning that the cool thing to do, what the cool kids are doing is they're filling their buckets with sand. All I need is some water, guys. I could build some sweet sand castles. <laughs> It's a rough gig, isn't it? Good work by Julia. She seeks out all the tough assignments at the ballparks. And she gets it done again. Marwin Gonzalez will lead off here in the eighth inning. Dallas Keuchel doing his thing. Leads 3-1 through seven innings. Just three San Diego hits. And two of those coming back in the first inning. A leadoff single by the pitcher Andrew Kashner in the sixth inning. The only base runner against Dallas. Since one out in the first inning. It's just phenomenal work. Has not walked a man today. And we'll see if he comes back out. 104 pitches on the afternoon for Dallas. And now right hander Dale Thayer comes on to pitch for the pods. And this one hit high and deep down the right field side. At the pole, it goes foul. Oh, and Gonzalez launches this towering shot. It's close. By the way, Andrew Kashner done with his day's work, seven innings. Thoroughly impressed. Uh, I, I thought he really showed great stuff, especially early on. Barwin with two balls and a strike on him. And that one not close. So three and one. The Astros could use an inning here. Nice to pick up a couple more runs. As you see Dale Thayer making his ninth appearance. Good ERA, fastball slider changeup. And Marwin draws the walk as we glance at the bullpen for the Astros. No activity at the moment. Does that say that Dallas Keuchel runs out there for an eighth inning? Be. San Diego bullpen in the series has had a rough go. My goodness. This being the third game of the series, and already it's the first time we see their bullpen today, but 16 runs in those first two wow. games given up by that San Diego bullpen. That's Ouch. not, not going to help your season stats as a group. 
Luis Valbuena has a double and three at bats. Pops it up. That'll be back in the seats. First row behind the dugout. Not a bunch of great hands as the ball drops and rolls into the Astros dugout. Shame is had everywhere. Second chance works out a little bit better. She would have made the play anyway, so it's a wise choice. Marwin at first, not one of the base stealers the Astros rely on, that's for certain. But a big hole on the right side for Valbuena. But he pops it up. Second baseman Jerko backing on the outfield grass. Makes the catch and out number one. But it's a very different ball game. With the 3-1 score. Just nine hits between the two clubs. The Astros with six of them. A well pitched day. And again now the intrigue as to how far Dallas Keuchel can go. George Springer is one for three with a double. He scored a run. His fifth double of the year. I'm going to give more credit to Dallas Keuchel too. When you were the opening day starter, you usually match up against those aces across the league, and that's what he's done in his first five starts: is matched up with each team's ace that he's faced. So, I, you look at the numbers he's doing, and look at the guys he's beating. It's pretty impressive. And again, he could very well, maybe should be 4 0 coming into today's start. So true. Springer with a big swing, fouls it off. 0 oh, 2 the count on George. Colby Rasmus waits on deck. Well, the run support that Dallas Keuchel is getting is by far the least on the starting rotation. He's getting, he's averaging 2.48 runs per start. So they've well exceeded that by giving him three. It's a big day offensively with Springer or, or make that Keichel on the mound. George takes low. One and two the count. Well, it's not over for Dallas or the Astros this afternoon, but Keichel again came into today's start with 11 consecutive quality starts. Springer lays off and a 2 2 count. Fastball there at 92 from Thayer. George Springer last year in 78 games, 20 bombs. Well behind that pace this year, but when he gets it going, it comes about as fast as you can see from any player in the big leagues. Very physically talented young man. Half swing. They appeal. Do not get it. First base umpire Manny Gonzalez with the palms down. Springer did a nice job keeping the hands ahead of the barrel there. Did do a good job. It would appear they're trying to work him up. Fastball is hit high in the air, right field. Coming in on a long run by Will Myers as he cuts in front of Kemp to make the play, second out in the eighth. Well, that play right there might say that Will Myers. Is the guy that's been told to take as much territory as he can possibly take. Colby Rasmus one for three that one a big one a two run home run in the fourth inning. It took a one one game made it three one Houston that's where we stand. So the big difference maker in the game. Fourth bomb of the year for Colby.
And the shift on three infielders on the right side, leaving only middle Brooks on the left. It's a common occurrence now in Major League Baseball. When will the hitters start working in batting practice trying to hit ground balls to the other side? This is last season's uh, hit chart heat map on Colby Rasmus. We already seen that he likes to pull the ball quite a bit. And this is just more evidence for why the shift is on when Colby Rasmus is at the plate. Colby has not had a hit to left field this year. There, there's not much reason to do anything but exactly what you see on the field defensively against Rasmus. Definitely increasing your odds, huh? Unless you can put one of your defenders out in the seats in right field somewhere. Didn't they try and shift on Ted Williams back in the day and he just said I'll just hit it over him. He just he hit it through him apparently just scorching line drive after line drive. You're right. I don't know is there a hitter that you would put in anywhere close to that category in today's world. Nope. There goes Marwin as the pitch is fouled off. Looked like Colby was either shooting toward left field or just tardy on that pitch. Yeah, let that ball get a little bit deeper than normal. I just think it's interesting that some of the better hitters in the league now are right handed hitters. The Miguel Cabrera's, Jose Altuve's. Well, that's a good point. You know what you just did? No. You lumped Jose Altuve with Miguel Cabrera. I did. Maybe not as far as power, but a couple of batting champs, both from yeah. Venezuela. <laughs> They've got some star power. Well, how about the top, the first three in the Astros lineup are all Venezuelan. Altuve, Marwin Gonzalez, and Luis Valbuena. Hmm. Pretty good Venezuelan connection. They're going to start calling Venezuela the hit factory. No kidding. They are really turning out some players that can swing the lumber. Three and two the count. Solarte the first baseman playing back there goes Marwin. As once again spoiling is Colby Rasmus. Yeah, Marwin getting his wind sprints in. Yeah but I think that's um, that's worth commenting about. Jose Altuve yeah he's won a batting title he's won a stolen base title. He's a whale of a player and everybody is learning what a great hitter he is. But already being mentioned now with Miguel Cabrera. Paul Goldschmidt, right handed hitter. Yes. DJ LeMay used a right handed hitter for the Rockies leading the league at hitting. Again, Marwin on the move. Ball hit in the air, right field. Kemp is under. The glass is gleaming. He makes the catch, and that'll do it. The leadoff walk is stranded. We played seven and a half, 3 1 Houston.
104 pitches he's going to extend things and boy has he been good. He's going to earn the nickname Mad Max because he's a pretty good road warrior. We hit on it early in the pregame and he's lived up to it here facing a great right handed lineup for the San Diego Padres. Got roughed up a little bit in that first inning, but just continues to go out there and grind away at the inside outside corners, getting all the ground balls. Shows you why he got that gold glove last year. You know what we haven't talked about a lot with the Astros and their success this year is the ground ball goes to Altuve and one pitch, one out. So 105 pitches, seven and a third innings. And he would love to continue that trend. That was the seven hitter, Clint Barnes, the defense. Has been overlooked to this point for the club, and it's been really good. Well, it's the last thing you look at when you know that the pitching has been phenomenal. The offense has been absolutely off the charts, so the defense is taking a little bit of the back seat. But you know, when you're playing defense behind a guy like Dallas Keuchel, you have to be ready. Just anticipate the ground ball, and that's such a good feeling as a defender. Back in the first inning, 19 pitches required by Keuchel, and it felt like, hmm, will he be able to get deep into this ball game? He had a 20 pitch inning mixed in. But Will Nieves, the eight hitter, the catcher today, 0 for 2 on his day. And a pinch hitter waiting on deck as the pots go to their bench. Derek Norris, the everyday catcher, has a bat. I know it's not effortless for Dallas Keigel to go out there, but at 106 pitches, he doesn't look taxed. He doesn't look exhausted. He just looks like he's the same guy inning to inning throwing the same pitches. Doesn't overexert himself too often. Doesn't let those high leverage situations get to him at all. Also helps when you go through the middle of the, of the game going 15 or putting down 14 straight batters too. One base runner since Matt Kemp's run producing triple in the first inning. That is it. A single by the opposing pitcher Andrew Kashner in the sixth. And he was left at first base, by the way. And now a 2 2 count. This would seem to be one of those outs that Dallas has to be thinking, I've got to get this one right now. The nine spot coming up next. And a chopper to third. With the glove, Valbuena makes the play. And that's good to see. It's real good to see. Bring the whole family out to Minute Maid Park on select Sundays with Kroger Family Four Pack starting at $70. This special package includes four tickets, four hot dogs, four sodas, and a Lot C parking pass. Get your Kroger Family Four Pack for this Sunday's game against the Mariners by visiting Astros.com slash value or calling 1-877-9-ASTROS. It's taken two ground ball outs here in the eighth inning to get to ten ground ball outs recorded by Dallas. But he's gotten once again into double figures. And now faces the pinch hitter Derek Norris. Good hitter. Norris hitting 316. And took a pitch right there that he may be wishing he had taken a swing at. You talk about that. Defense behind Dallas Keuchel. Got to give a little bit of credit to Adam Everett, who did a good job in spring training getting these guys prepared. Never going to not take a chance to mention one of my old teammates. Ash. Yeah, the guy who can swing a golf club, by the way, that always impresses me. You want to know where I saw him last? Sure. The Masters. Did you really? Yeah, we're just wandering around. We were over by Amen Corner. Turn the corner and I see his wife Jennifer, and I'm like, well, where's Adam? And sure enough, Adam right behind her. It's like old home week there in Augusta. 2 1 pitch is a strike. Well, I was uh, certainly impressed last year with his golf game. He's got a great swing. He does. And he really does the job with the infielders, like you talk about. 2 and 2 the count now on Norris. Pinch hitting with two outs and the bases empty in the eighth inning. What a job by Dallas Keuchel if he gets through this eighth inning. Ground ball to the right side. 11 ground ball outs. A 1 2 3 eighth inning. Chad Falls is loosening, so we're likely to see him as we go to the bottom of the ninth. But 3 1 Houston.
Sports is presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare right now at southwest.com. And by GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Would you rather be there or at the ballpark watching Dallas Keuchel and his mastery over all major league hitters? And he's done it again today. He's allowed just three hits through eight innings. He and his Astros lead it 3 1 here in the ninth inning, trying to sweep away the Padres and make it back to back sweeps, sweeps rather, and eight of nine on a road trip. Craig Kimbrell comes on for the pods here in the ninth. Well, this is the situation you want to see Craig Kimbrell in if you're a Houston Astro fan or hitter. Not a safe situation. In here to get some work done. He can bring some cheddar. Some Nine, jet fuel. 97 on the first offering. Chris Carter trying to extend a seven game hitting streak. He is 0 for 3 with a couple of punch outs. Yeah, Kimbrell's averaging 97 miles an hour on the fastball. His curveball slash sl slider slurve coming in there at 86 miles an hour. By the way, Dallas Keuchel yielding a run today over eight innings, and there you see it's now Luke Gregerson getting loose in the Astros pen for that ninth inning. Dallas Keuchel came in with an 062 ERA, gave up a run today, and has seen his ERA balloon to 073. Boo! Well, when a guy's deserving, he's deserving, right? <laughs> it's incredible. 073 through five starts. It was like Altuve at the end of last year hitting 340. If he went one for three, his average dropped. It's insane. And, <laughs> and we've talked about that that crazy stat that has just stuck in my head all the way, June 19th. He got above 330 and never followed a game going below 330. You can't do that, can you? Well, one guy can, but it doesn't make any sense. Carter takes a strike. It's three and two on Chris. The Astros trying to improve to 14 and seven. Heading back home tomorrow. It'll be Scott Feldman opposing Seattle and James Paxton and Carter draws the leadoff walk in the ninth. Tomorrow night's pitching matchup is presented by Chevron care for your car. Scott Feldman going out back out to the hill had himself a good outing last time he was out there. Up in Oakland pitching well in the O.D.C.O. contributing to that series sweep. We're going up against left hander. For the Seattle Mariners and Paxton, one of those youngsters with a good electric arm, getting roughed up a little bit. This part of the season could be good timing for the Astros bats to get going at home against him. Jake Marisnik sees what some big time gas looks like. What is that pose? We don't see it right now, but the, the Kimbrel pose when he looks in for the the sign. I don't know. Is there, is there a name for that thing? Maybe it was in Philadelphia, and all the fans within the screenshot right here in the background were doing the same pose all at once. It was pretty funny, but for some reason, I thought I had heard in the past the condor or something like that. Talk of the condor, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Pitch down and away gets away from Nieves to the backstop into second base is Carter. So the Astros have an opportunity to pick up a run man in scoring position and nobody out. What I think is interesting is that this is a tighter ball game than we've seen the last two nights and the Astros clearly look like the team with the edge. It almost looks as if the Padres have defeated themselves going up against Dallas Keuchel who's pitching quite well. It was a game that felt like it could have turned back in the first inning. A run in, one out. Matt Kemp had tripled. He was at third base. The cleanup man, Justin Upton, at the plate. And Dallas got in on the hands of Upton, got him to pop out for a key second out, and then got the five hitter, Middlebrooks. And from there on, just flat dominated the Padres' bats. 
But I agree with you. I think you said it in between innings. That was the at bat of the game. Marisnik with a good swing has a one two count. Well if the pods had jumped on top two to nothing in the first inning. Just by simply hitting a ground ball to short or second or a fly ball. And the way Kashner was throwing by the way Kashner struck out the first six he faced on the afternoon. It felt like it could have been a, a real tough uphill climb for the Astros bats. Another one gets by Nieves to the backstop. The first one a wild pitch. It is another wild pitch. And so Carter's into third base with nobody out. Nieves having a tough time with the heat from Kimbrell and the breaking stuff from Kimbrell. Granted, they're not perfect pitches to try and block, but that's two. Well, you say thank you very much if you're the Astros because this fourth run would be enormous for the club. You know, you're not going to be on the flight this evening, but I think it has a chance to be a really nice one. Base hit to right field. RBI single. Carter went back to the bag and now sprints to the plate and slides to score. It is four to one Houston and Jake Marisnik is playing some kind of baseball. Proven to be a pretty good hitter here in the big leagues. A huge asset on this ball club too. getting that insurance run that makes the lead four to one gives Luke Gregerson when he comes in a three run cushion. But these at. He's at bats late in games and that's another run for the Houston Astros offense from the sixth inning on. Well hand it to Jeff Luno and, and staff for that acquisition of Marisnik last year. He has been just great. Good grief Will Nieves. He must have a tough time seeing the ball. Yeah this. This looks like a catcher that is in the major scuffle mode. Hank Conger at the plate 0 for 2 with a walk. There goes Marisnik. He's after his seventh bag and he's got it. And Will Nieves doesn't wind up with a pass ball here because it's a stolen base, but Nieves has apparently lost all confidence here in the inning. Yeah, having never caught, at least in a big league game, thank goodness, to get a look at Marisnik stealing yet another bag. Would you ever get the, the yips on a ground ball? There, I, I've had slumps on defense where I just was not comfortable, but not the yips. No. Where you just start reaching for balls and you do it wrong time after time. Yeah, I've been in plenty of situations where I just couldn't get my footwork done on some ground balls and just get eaten alive. So that's that's the similar situation behind the dish, huh? I, I not a good feeling. Yeah, it's not good. And once you lose confidence, it, it doesn't get better from there. Pop up behind the plate. Nieves makes the catch at number one in the ninth. From the sixth on, the Astros pretty darn good. Yeah, this is what we were talking about. This is now remember these numbers on this current road trip are from the sixth inning on. 37 runs scored. 317 batting average. 308 with runners in scoring position. We could go on and on, but that's pretty incredible stuff. And on the right hand side, the bullpen shutting down opposing teams late in games, which lead to some of these series wins and possible sweep here in San Diego after sweeping the Oakland A's. I always wonder about numbers like that if there's any pure logic to them, or is it just coincidence that a club gets hot for a, a period of time? Pinch hitter now, it's Evan Gaddis. There goes Marisnik. He's into third and will score. On what likely will be an E2, throw goes into left field. Eight stolen bases for Jake Marisnik. And the Astros have three guys at the top of the lead in that category. They lead five to one. And Luke Gregerson no longer has a save opportunity. And Will Nieves has got nothing going for him right now. Right handed hitter, smart move by, by Marisnik, stealing with the right handed hitter up. And you see Will Nieves trying to throw around the hitter. Gaddis ducking out of the way, but I believe if, as long as he stays inside that box, it's his territory to hold on to. But I think that was a ball that Will Middlebrooks had a real good yes. chance to catch. I agree. I agree. The hitter does not have to move. He just can't can't 
intentionally move in the way of the catcher, but he can hold stand his ground. Two bags for Marisnik. Gaddis a looper that'll drop for a hit. Soft line drive off of Kimbrell and the Astros have put two on the board, have a second hit in the inning, and back to the top for Altuve. And Jake Marisnik is having fun. These guys are electric right now. Manager Bud Black going out to, I believe, get Kimbrell. Don't want to have him throw too many pitches. He's getting his work in, but they've got to save him for the next series. Yeah, it's about keeping the closer ready to go. But you don't want to abuse him either and so the pods go to their bullpen once again but the Astros have done what the pods probably were trying to stay away from in the ninth inning they've added a pair lead five one and trying to make it six straight here on the West Coast trip. inning as he hooked a home run his fourth on the year back in the fourth inning two run job it made it three one Houston Jake Marisnik has also stepped in and done very well fantastic play on defense we already knew that the Astros outfield was doing a great job of covering some ground picking up his boy Dallas Keuchel and right here driving in Chris Carter with a great base hit off the closer Craig Kimbrell this would be his first stolen base here in the ninth inning, put himself in scoring position, and then scored himself. There's a shot down the right field side. Altuve has extra bases. Here comes being waved home. LJ Hose, the pinch runner, and he will score into third base. Altuve, that's three runs in the inning, and the Astros are really laying it on the Padres here in the third and final game between the clubs on the year. Seventh straight multi hit game for Jose Altuve on top of everything else the man has been doing. Where do you play him? What do you pitch him? There's no book right now on Jose Altuve. Because whatever you try to adjust to, he's going to he's gonna outmatch you and beat you with it. Infield comes in. But it's already six to one. Marwin Gonzalez at the plate takes a strike. So that was LJ Hose scoring, pinch running for Evan Gaddis. Shocking another double for the Houston Astros. Ooh, ooh. Ten extra base hits yesterday. Oh. Throw to the plate. And, and that was. That was about as rough as a pitcher can make it on a catcher right oh there. Boy. Everybody's safe. Marlins at second base. The fourth run of the inning scores as Altuve comes in. And I got to tell you, Brandon Maurer, the new right-hander, on a pitch for San Diego, just made as ugly a play to a catcher as you'll see. This baseball's getting ugly. This is basically a swinging squeeze bunt right here, and Maurer thought he had a chance of going home, but. 
Hatfields threw a long dart that Will Nieves had no shot at getting, and he's actually pretty lucky to bomb has got a glove on this ball and didn't go into center field, allowing Marlin to get all the way to third, but not pretty baseball being played here in a gorgeous ballpark. So an E1 puts Marlin at second. Wow. A 3-1 ball game coming into the ninth inning that still felt yeah, a little squeamish. But now the Astros make it seven to one. Have a man in scoring position. One out. Luis Valbuena batting in that three spot today is one for four with a double. This is truly incredible stuff we're watching here in the last road trip. You know, it's the Astros playing well, but in a circumstance like this where the Padres just come unraveled with the catcher and the and the pitcher making that play and I, is it the heat being put on by Houston that's exactly what I was just going to say it is the pressure that these Astros are putting on them the at bats they're putting on them it's the oppressive pitching that they're going out there with and the base running fly ball to left field oppressive pitching right like there oh they, they're just not allowing anybody to come up for air they just continue to keep them held underwater they just keep bashing them but how about the I mean the speed alone is causing some serious yes. defensive woes here Agreed. in San Diego Agreed. the Astros have just run wild and they've done it on both Norris and Nieves now so nine runs on Monday 14 runs on Tuesday seven runs here you think we were playing back home in Minute Maid not Petco and this is the Cashner game that started with the first six hitters striking out fly ball center field Will Myers has a beat on it. He makes the catch. Springer flies out, the eighth hitter of the inning. But the Astros put four on the board, going to the bottom of the ninth inning, 7 1 Houston. Some unhittable stuff. There's no hitter against the Giants. Terry Poole tracking down everything in sight. That was a little earlier on. But Jose Cruz could swing it with the best of them. Joe Negro in that knuckleball. If it looks like it might be a little tough on TV, go try it yourself. It was pure filth. And Evan Gaddis has added in this year's version. Yeah, breaking up a whooping stick here at Peco Park. Match that great year in 1986 for the Houston Astros, led to that phenomenal series against the Mets in the NLCS. Not a bad team to try and match up with, but here in San Diego, they're just tearing the cover off the ball. Extra base hits galore to be had by the Houston Astros. 1986, the reason for the comparison. Last year, the Astros went 9 and 2 to start. The season out on the road, and that's what the Astros are very close now to wrapping up. As they go after their 14th win of the year against seven losses, Luke Gregerson comes on for the ninth. Ready for a number? Sure. Padres have allowed more runs in this series than in the last six games. 
30 runs allowed in this series, 28 runs in the last six games. What do you do if you're Bud Black, the manager? Just go in and say, hey, guys, forget about the last three days. Let's go start playing the kind of baseball that we're accustomed to playing. Now you go try and find uh, Will Smith from Men in Black and bring out that, you know, that <laughs> neuralizer and just go zap. That's a good answer. Wow. Luke Gregerson, no shot for a save here. Just trying to get some work in and keep it right here. Seven to one. Three Padre hits. They had two hits after three hitters today. Little pop up shallow down the right field side. Carter and drops it. It's a fair oh, ball. Oh. And into second base, Will Myers. Like to see a little more urgency out of the first base from Chris Carter. Kind of drifting to this ball. Too far for Jose Altuve to get to it. This is the hard part about transplanting an outfielder into first base. That ball clearly in fair territory. Good call. Hope this doesn't lead to a big inning. So Myers aboard at second instead of it being one out. Jan Harry Solarte 0 for 3 on his day. Dallas Keuchel in position to win his third of the year. Ground ball hit to short. Had to move the runner up. Marwin makes the sure play and out number one. And we're checking with Julia once again. Hey guys, you were getting us ready for Scott Feldman tomorrow against Seattle. That next start though, still up in the air, although I have a feeling that A.J. Hinch knows what he wants to do. He said a lot of it had to do with today and if he needed to use a guy like Sam Duduno, so you can expect maybe to see him. Also, Jake Buchanan was an option for that Friday start in AAA Fresno right now. Uh, some news, though, Oberholzer working his way back, going to have a rehab start tomorrow with AAA Fresno. He could be somebody that they look at for maybe that next rotation, guys. Thanks, Julia. And you're looking there at Dallas Keuchel, who has turned into one of the game's premier left-handers, without question. Infield playing back. They'll give up the run. A.J. Hinch. What exactly would A.J. be telling Dallas Keuchel at that point? I love you. That would be probably where I would start. You're my favorite. Remember that ground ball you gave up over there? That was the one that really impressed me, but maybe not as much as that little ground ball over there. Broken back, ground ball to third. The barrel end goes flying, but Valbuena stays focused and gets the out. Scoring from third base is Myers. An unearned run. It's now 7 2 Astros, but two outs here in the ninth inning. One out away from the Astros making it six straight wins, two straight sweeps. Eight of nine on the West Coast swing. Barrel went farther than the ball. And I've been down there at third base. When that barrel comes flying at you in the ground ball, too, not a comfortable feeling. What of all those numbers maybe impresses you most? Every one of them. It's incredible. Not typical for a team to go on the road and dominate like they are. But to do stuff that you've never done, that's what's most impressive. Never swept the Oakland A's. Boom, they do it. Never had a record of 8-1 on a nine-game road trip. Boom, they're doing it. Last time they swept the Padres, 1982. And there's that. So there's some history being made on this road trip. Dallas might be talking to A.J. going, man, I could have gone a complete game. They continue their conversation down in the dugout. Or he might be asking to pitch tomorrow. <laughs> oh boy. Wow. What are you doing, man? The fan that reached out and put his hand on that wicked laser. Down to a strike, two and two the count. Hit in the air, this is going to do it. 
Jake Marisnik is there. He makes the catch. The Astros sweep away the Padres. The Astros are now 14 and 7 through 21 games. Dallas Keuchel wins his third of the year as he is 3 and 0. And I don't know what you add to this plumber, but this is great stuff from the Astros. It's fantastic. It's been fun to watch. They've been doing it in every aspect of the game. Going to get no complaints from me. I just hope that they take this on the plane with them back to Houston. Well, there's a happy bunch, and it's not going to stop anytime soon.